Hey guys, we're off on a little prawny mission. Conditions are perfect. We got uh, the kids and my buddy Sean. Heading out, a perfect day, Sandwich Inlet. Welcome to FMB. This is a great couple of days. I've put together in a couple of short videos of going prawning, looking for spot shrimp, side straight shrimp in area 19 in Victoria not far from the San Juan Islands in Washington State. We've got my friend Sean on board and family and friends. Yeah, just, just having a really great time, enjoying some, some calm spring weather. So really, really happy to be putting this together. Stay tuned for our octopus catch and we recovered somebody's prawn traps. We're just buzzing along here on the way out to our spot. And sure enough, what do I see floating in the middle of this channel at about 650 feet? See a boy floating. 7 a.m. and we're just recovering some of his lost pawn trap. They dropped it in somewhere around 300 feet, probably a little bit too deep for their line, and it's now floating at 660 feet. So we'll try and find them on the internal webs. No phone number on their boy. But Snyder, it says, may set up a nice rope and it will not have any prongs with it. Unless I'm mistaken. Nothing. Sure enough, no prongs. So just in a couple minutes, thanks to our trap puller, we were underway again. Heading out to grab our, our spot, put down our prawn traps. Pretty neat to see how that other fellow has set up his traps. We're gonna be fishing square traps. Regardless if they're round or square, you're looking at anywhere from 50 to 120 bucks for a set of, or for one trap, um, plus your bait, uh, and then your clips, and then your line, and then your boy. So super expensive to, just to kind of get started in prawning, but way cheaper than doing it commercially. So next thing you're gonna see is I'm gonna throw some traps overboard. Here we're gonna be setting some traps up uphill towards shore. So kind of going from that 300 to 200 foot marker. Sometimes prawns are a little shallower or a little deeper. And, and really setting up hill gives you a chance to find out where the prawns are at. Because if you set two traps like I'm doing here, one could be at two, 250 feet, another one at 210 feet, depending on how far you space them out. And that way you can really hone in if you run a couple of traps uphill, really find out what depth they're, they're at, and then reset all your traps kind of in the in the correct zone. Because if you set too deep, you might get a lot of critters in there. Uh, Logostinas, uh, squat lobsters, people call them, red rock crabs, lots of other things are down there. And as, as we're gonna see in this video, octopus as well. So depending on where you set, will be how many prawns you get, but also how many of those prawns get eaten as well. So really important and really keeping your hands free, being careful. You know, in the case I got kids on board, making sure they're inside while the prawns traps go over the side. One of the things you might have noticed is the traps we had brought on that were floating didn't have any weight in it. Where we've got a dive weight, 2.2 pounds or a kilogram in each trap. So those traps are going down to the bottom really nicely. But I'm also just stretching the line out a little bit just to make sure they don't get caught up. It really lands nicely. And then I'm throwing that boy over it's got our name written on it and our phone number so if we run into any trouble we can find it again and somebody can get in touch with us now here i am pulling the traps a couple hours later and something interesting is going to happen you'll find that as the seasons kind of narrow uh, and fishing pressure pressure increases there's often lots of people fishing the same areas so in this case just as i bring this up we're gonna be coming past a set of prawn traps uh, and we're watching the current and make sure the lines as they come up aren't gonna tangle with another another set of gear. Super important to, to be cognizant of other people fishing, commercial fishers being out there. So don't set your traps on top of anybody else's. And you know, as you're learning, just find some open space. Just look for those contours uh, that are you know, maybe a few hundred meters away you know, half a kilometer away, find another spot. Nice things about prawns and fish, they travel, right? So 
as you're learning, don't get in tight. Once you become really proficient, then you can usually set around other people. Most time people set parallel to shore, uh, but you gotta be careful. And commercial prawners, they set 40 to 50 traps on a, on a string sometimes. So you gotta be super careful not to get involved with your gear. They're trying to make a living, you're out to have fun. Now I'm super fortunate to have my family on board. I've got my son and daughter. My son's been prawning with me since before he was two. My daughter's now now two. So this, this is really nice because my brother actually taught me to prawn out with his family and his kids. I've got family that own commercial prawning boats and friends that are out commercial prawning right now in some pretty amazing weather and stuff. So yeah, it's super thankful that my family likes to get out there fishing with me. And yeah, it just allows us to enjoy the outdoors together and also put some amazing food on the table. In this case, going for spot prawns and side striped shrimp. So yeah, we're, we're catching already. I'm super excited here. I get a little tangle going on, but it just sorted it out right there. And boom, up comes the other prawn trap. And yeah, a little bit better in this one. Um, got a well over a dozen squat prawns in this one and you can see might be fishing a little bit deep I've got some squat lobsters logostinas in that one so yeah, yeah. pretty good prawning yeah, all around dozen, you can see that. them pretty excited to make their way into our frying pan and into our bellies there That's it. now when you're not great at fishing you gotta fish a lot so here we are pulling up a few more traps yeah and running at least four traps is probably a good idea, but in, in our case, uh, we got tons of people on board. It limits about a 125. I think it's about 200 in Washington State. So, yeah, we, we want to get as close as we can. Sean showing us a Dungeness crab that was down at about 250 feet. Not a keeper, so throwing it back, of course. Yeah, and you can see these traps are a little bit better. Nothing but spot prawns in them, but, you know, some pretty good pressure. Uh, you know, the commercial season hasn't started, but still lots of people with traps mm -hmm. out there, um, but super happy. You know, these prawns that we're dropping in there, if you go to the store and grab spot prawns, they're going to be at about 30 to 50 bucks a pound. You know, really some premium, premium seafood. And yes, nothing gets much fresher. You can see those guys just flopping around. And, and the nice thing about this time of year, there's no eggs because if you catch prawns that are, are females holding eggs, you really got to put them back in the water as soon as possible, being super careful that seagulls don't get them. Some will get eaten on the way to the bottom, but most should really survive if you put them back in the water right away. Yeah, pretty happy with this catch. Um, it's not too warm a day, so just, just put it in there just like that without any ice is adequate, let's say, for this this type of season. Good hole for a but one of the, the funny things is when you're fishing that deep, well, you not, often you find know, something else that comes up. And in this case, we've down got down a down. Pacific yeah. octopus that came up in the trap and he's trying to make his way out of the boat. We've got some scupper, scuppers in the back there that he actually starts to make his way to. That's kind of squeeze down and out, out the back of the boat. But um, we're gonna let this little guy go free you get allowed one octopus per person per day, but you know, in th this case, we're just letting this guy go. Octopus are amazing creatures. I don't know if you've seen the octopus teacher. Great, great show on Netflix. There you go. Here's There's our second release of octopus. Oh, Love this because my kids get to see oh, I'm putting in. real nature, not oh. an aquarium in real life. Oh. Now we're just going to split back to back my driveway yeah. a couple weeks later oh, after finding the guy whose traps were actually floating in 650 feet of water. You found some yourself? So this is kind of... Yeah, we one time we found... Same thing, floating in the middle of the street. Yeah. Um, and so I picked them up. Uh, but I didn't post it. There was a number on it. And so when I got back to that, called the guy and he was up in Maple Bay. Yeah. And same kind of thing. So... Awesome. Looks like I need to get on that Facebook group. Uh, yeah, and and you need your your, well, your name or your number. It's what's crazy is like at the start of the year we go through 
and, and put it on so it's amazing that this is on but it's obviously come yeah. off oh, on fine. on this one well and it's nice it's a nice string of traps too it's probably worth oh, 400 yeah. bucks totally yeah yeah awesome yeah. no i really i really appreciate it super stoked to get him back his traps and really to have two really great days out on the water getting some productive fishing done and really enjoying everything that the west coast pacific northwest has to offer so if you get a chance go buy some fresh seafood from one of the shops they're fresh in all your local seafood shops you can buy them online on bclivespotprawns.com you can go to finest at sea you can go to pike place market all those places are great places to get really really good seafood year round uh, and support commercial fishing follow me on fmb like and subscribe and comment below Hope to see you out here for some lingcod, halibut, and salmon trips. Oh.